In my last two videos, I discussed a few electrical and computer exam preparation tips for students who are either recent graduate or they've been out of school anywhere between three to seven years. In this video, we are going to discuss exam preparation tips for seasoned professionals who have been out of school for many years, for more than seven years, 10 years, or even 15 years. But before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video, click the subscribe button and the bell icon. So whenever students enroll in my IP Electrical and Computer On Demand exam preparation course, I ask them how many years they've been out of school and based on my observation and the stats that I've collected, roughly 50% of the students fall in the category of either recent graduates or they're in the final year of their studies. The remaining 25% of the students are anywhere between three to seven years out of school. And the final 25% of students are the ones who have been out of school for more than seven years. So what's the reason why somebody would decide to take the FE electrical and computer exam so later in their career as compared to taking it when they graduated? There are two broad categories. The first category is the fact that you don't really realize the importance of P license of taking the FE electrical and computer exam right out of school until your career sort of plateaus. And it's at that point in time that you realize that, okay, for me to go to the next level, I have to get my PE license. The second category of students who decide to take the FE electrical and computer exam after being out of school for so many years are internationally trained engineers. So you might have worked outside of US, you might even have professional engineering license, but if you want to establish your career in the US, then you have to get, go through the PE licensing process. And in many cases, you are required to take the FE electrical and computer exam and then the PE exam, most likely PE power exam. So if you're in this category and you've been out of school for several years, my first tip for you is to realize the fact that you will have to put extra time and effort and energy to learn and relearn several topics. And when you get into the exam preparation mode with this realization that I have to work extra hard, I have to use better exam preparation resources, I have to manage my time effectively, then you will be in the mindset to get this thing done in the first attempt. But if you take a complacent approach towards your FE electrical and computer exam preparation and assume that you're probably at the same footing as somebody who is just graduating from the school, then the chances of you passing this exam are going to be quite slim. My second tip for you, and this tip actually applies to all students, regardless of whether they are final year students, recent graduates, three years out of school, seven, 10, 15, 20 years, is to develop familiarity with the NCS FE Reference Handbook. Now, the NCS FE Reference Handbook is the only resource that you're allowed during the exam, and students who are enrolled in my FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course know that I take them step by step through all the relevant sections of NCS FE Reference Handbook. When I explain a concept, I cross reference with the relevant formula, with the relevant definition, circuits, and so on and so forth. When they are taking the quizzes, when they're taking the mini exams, when they're taking the computer simulated practice exams, everything is cross referenced so by going through the entire program, you're able to develop familiarity with the NCSFA reference handbook. On that note, I would also advise you against using Control F feature of NCSFP Reference Handbook because when you do a Control F, it's in a PDF format, it will potentially uh, return a lot of results and you want clarity on the exam. You don't want to get distracted. So you're searching for resistor, you're searching for temperature coefficient, uh, you might get two, three, four, five, six results. They might not be in the electrical engineering section of the reference handbook. They might be in some of the other sections. That basically means that you're bouncing back and uh, forth between different sections. So what's my recommendation? My recommendation is to use the bookmarks in NCSF reference handbook so that when you are going through mathematics section, then you're only in the mathematics section rather than using control F, which will basically take you all over the place. But in order to do that, you have to become familiar with the handbook. And the only way to become familiar with the handbook is to use it as part of your daily studying. And that's what you will find if you enroll in my FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course, that I will actively help you develop familiarity with the reference handbook through quizzes, through lectures, through mini exams, through computer simulated practice exams, and so on. My third tip, which applies again to all students, is to know your calculator inside out. 
Now, if you've been out of school for a long time, this is of particular importance to you because you're required to solve every single problem on average within three minutes, which is a tough ask even if you're a recent graduate or a final year student. So it becomes even more difficult for you because you've been out of school for a while. Let me give you one example. If you were to take the inverse of a matrix, a three by three matrix, it would typically take anywhere between three to four minutes. It takes me three to four minutes in order to find the inverse of a three by three matrix but with the help of a calculator, you can do it under a minute. Now, in my FE Electric and Computer Exam Preparation course, I have several videos um, which explain how you can solve different problems using the calculators. So I solve the problems by hand in the lecture, and then I have tutorial sections for the calculators where students are able to see how quickly they can actually work out those problems, and the chances of making calculation errors are basically next to nothing. My fourth tip for students who've been out of school for a while is to familiarize themselves with computer-based testing. As you probably know, FE Electrical and Computer Exam is a computer-based exam. Similarly, PE Power Exam is a computer-based exam. Now, if you graduated more than 10 or 15 years ago, chances are that most of the exams that you took in your undergraduate or graduate studies were pen and paper-based. Um, a lot of exams that I took were pen and paper based as well. In fact, I was one of the very first students uh, back in 2014 when I took my FE electrical and computer exam, which was in the CBT format. Now, the CBT format, in my opinion, actually gives you a lot more flexibility because of um, several features that are embedded in the computer-based testing format. And if you're able to utilize those features properly, you can actually save a lot of time. Now, in my FE electrical and computer on-demand exam preparation course, at the end of every section, I have mini exams. Now, these mini exams are in a computer simulated format where you can go back and forth between the questions, you can flag the questions, there's a timer, so that when you go through the course, when you take these mini exams, and at the end of the course, there's a full line computer simulated practice exam, you become familiar with how a CBT format looks like, how you can select questions, how you can flag questions, how you can go get back and forth between the questions. This can make a lot of difference on the day of exam because you don't want to see a computer-based testing format for the first time during the exam. You don't want to waste time in order to figure out, okay, if I flag, then what happens? If I unflag, what happens? How can I navigate back and forth between the questions? Where is the timer? Where is the calculator? And if you want to gain experience with that, I would recommend using a resource that helps you sort of become more and more familiar with that as you are going through your exam preparation rather than waiting for the exam day and getting exposed to it for the first time. My fifth and final tip and probably the most important tip but unfortunately a fairly vague tip is to stay motivated. And I don't know exactly what will motivate you the most. Now, if you're an internationally trained engineer, you know that in order to establish your career within the US, you have to get your PE license. It will do wonders for your job opportunities and career growth. Now, if you are a professional in your mid-career and you're realizing that in order to get the promotion or in order to go for better employment opportunities, you have to get your PE license. And you'd be surprised that very often, one of the main reasons I hear from students who have been out of school for several years and they're planning to take their PE exam is basically they want to prove it to their own self that they can actually become a PE. A lot of times I hear from students that I've been working in the industry for so long, I actually know everything I need to do for my job, but somebody else has to stamp it and that's why I basically cannot get promoted. If this is you, then you know that for you to basically be in that position where you have your own stamp, where you have your own license, you have to go through this process. And unfortunately, in my personal opinion, FE Electrical and Computer Exam is probably the more difficult aspect of this PE licensure process for somebody who's been out of school for several years as compared to the PE exam. Now, a lot of my students, uh, when they pass the FE exam, a lot of them enroll in my PE Power course and they tell me that, Basim, PE Power exam preparation is a lot more fun than FE Electrical and Computer Exam preparation. The reason, because I'm a power systems engineer and I don't have to worry ever about electronics uh, BJTs, MOSFETs, op amps. I don't have to worry about control systems as much. I really don't use computer networks, computer systems. So those topics which you are required to learn in FE Electrical and Computer Exam are for the most part irrelevant to your job if you are already a seasoned professional working in the industry as a power systems engineer. But 
the content that you will have to learn for PE power exam preparation and that you get tested on is a lot of times very, very relevant. So that's why in my personal experience, PE power exam preparation is a lot more fun as compared to FE electrical and computer. It is much more difficult, but it's a lot more fun. So if you're interested in my FE electrical and computer exam preparation course or the PE power exam preparation course, I've included a link at the end of the video and I look forward to helping you pass these challenging exams.